Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Season 2020 Update, part of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for July 31st, 2020, recorded around 2.50 p.m. Eastern Time. Taking a look here at Hurricane Isaias. Maximum sustained winds of 75 miles per hour, pressure down to 991 millibars on a strengthening trend a little bit during the day today. We'll go over that here in a minute. Uh, currently, a couple of things to point out here. First of all, all of the tropical storm uh, warnings have been canceled for the Dominican Republic, Hispaniola, and Puerto Rico. So no tropical storm watches or warnings issued for or that are in effect for those islands at all. The biggest concerns now are uh, immediately to the Bahamas today and Florida tomorrow into Sunday and early Monday. So first of all, again, this is a hurricane down here, and this track forecast is bringing it up through the Bahamas near Nassau, uh, the Grand Bahama Island, Marsh Harbor area, some of those areas that were impacted hard by Dorian last year. You now have another hurricane coming your way. Again, it is going to be possibly strengthening in through here, although probably will not be much stronger than 90 or so miles per hour. But once again, you just never say never and unfortunately we just don't need a hurricane down here in this part of the world right now but this is going to come close to, to Florida and again hurricane warnings in effect for all of the Bahamas at this point again you know gusty winds heavy rainfall uh, flooding storm surge that's going to be a big problem for Florida, we have tropical storm warnings in effect for uh, from Deerfield Beach all the way to the Bavard or to uh, just south of uh, just south of the Bavard County line. This includes, um, you know, Vero Beach, um, you know, Port St. Lucie, uh, Port St. Lucie, those areas. And a hurricane watch has been issued from Deerfield Beach uh, through the Volusia Bavard County line up here. And this could be extended further northward as we progress throughout time here. And again, this is just something we really have to watch now going in through the next few days. Eventually, this is still expected to be a hurricane on approach into the Carolinas. So for you folks down here in South Carolina and North Carolina, it's now your turn to start getting your hurricane preparedness plans ready and implement it again for florida and the bahamas you should already be doing that but now looking downstream from uh from florida in the bahamas now is going to be turning the attention towards uh you know this, the carolinas here so for you folks you know in the carolinas south carolina included in that and obviously north carolina and even all the way up through portions of you know eastern virginia and into the delvmar you need to be start to you know you need to start taking your hurricane preparedness plans now it's Especially if you live in the Carolinas. Again, these day, day four and five time frames, they're going to, to change around a little bit. But if you live in the Carolinas, down through Florida, obviously the Bahamas goes without saying, you need to be taking our hurricane preparedness plans right now, immediately. So a couple of things that we want to take a look at here. This is the uh, GO-16 meso, uh, mesoscale uh, floater here um, on Hurricane Isaias. And again, a couple of things to note here. First of all, it looks a lot better organized than it did this morning. Again, if we can just, we kind of zoom this out here. You notice how our, we still have a drier side over here on the western portion. You notice these clouds aren't necessarily filling this whole entire area out here, but we have a fairly good curved band that's stretching into through here you also notice that there is some lightning that's those little uh, uh, orange uh, X's right there indicative of some lightning in the eye wall and if we take a look here from the Bahamas uh, radar site here this is uh, coming from uh, the, the Bahamas meteorology site again if we just kind of stop that right here again you, you can notice a, a couple of things here first of all we had an attempt earlier at the wrapping around of the eye wall right here this would have signaled uh, what could have been a more significant bout of intensification, but that ultimately failed and we did not get that wrap around to occur. Now we're still left with kind of this partial eye wall. And again, this is very important because if this intensifies further, uh, this can take a track further to the east. But there's caveats to that, and we'll talk about that here in a moment. But again, this uh, right now is a partial eye wall. Again, it, it's not a closed uh, eye wall at the moment. It's a partial eye wall open to the north or, or to the south and southwest and southeast of the system. So it's not really a closed. It's only uh, basically uh, closed on the northern part, if, if you kind of so to speak with that. 
Now, the recon plane that was in there earlier uh, this morning did find a couple of things. First of all, you notice the pressures down here of about 995, 996. Now, these pressures were more consistent around uh, 994 to 993 uh, because they recorded about uh, the splashdown of the drop zones uh, in this region. We're consistently getting about 20 knot winds. That suggests that that's not the center because the, the center is obviously about zero. Uh, and so kind of roughly using some calculations, that's about 992 to 993 millibars. Now, uh, earlier or you know later in, in the cycle, the recon plane found some hurricane force winds again. They didn't find any on the first and second passes, but on the third pass, they found some hurricane uh, flight level winds. Again, this is kind of fluctuating right now between about 60, maybe 70 miles per hour and 74 or 75 miles per hour. And the Hurricane Center obviously isn't going to keep changing this between tropical storm and hurricane each advisory. So it's better just to stick with the hurricane. Hurricane warnings are already in effect, obviously. It's producing hurricane force gusts. It's basically the same deal here. 70 and 75, you can't tell the difference. It's the same thing. Even 60 miles per hour at, at the low end, and that's obviously generous because this has a, a partial eye wall. But the bottom line here, this you know is trying to get better organized. Pressures on the last pass through here were about 993. Again, the recon plane is, is now left. Um, but 993, that suggests about 992 to 991 millibars. So this is trying to intensify further on approach into um, the central Bahamas here. So that is something to note. If we take a look here at the IR satellite presentation from tropicaltibbets.com, a couple of things to point out here. Uh, first and foremost, we have a pretty well-developed uh, eye, eye structure here. And again, that's kind of very consistent uh, with the uh, eye wall that we kind of have this banding uh, kind of taking shape here. And again, this is not a really well organized but it's trying to get better organized and that's kind of the point that we're trying to get out here and if you can you can kind of see where we're getting these bouts of this uh, deeper convection to kind of blow up and we do have some outflow you can see some of the outflow there and if we go back quickly here to the visible satellite you notice here that we have a fairly good uh, environment of outflow with the storm especially off towards the northwest but we don't have so much of a good outflow pattern to the southwest. And that's where your some of the shear is to the southwest, which is significantly prohibiting a lot of that outflow to rapidly expand. You notice that there is outflow to the southeast and some to the south, but there's not a lot uh, directly southwest because of that southwestern shear that's kind of being impinged on the system. So that's limiting the uh, intensification right through here. And again, we can kind of see that from the recon in the Bahamas radar that you're not really seeing that significant amount of an eye wall uh, closing off here. Again, for a more significant intensification, you want to see this eye wall close off. So the trends today and tonight are going to be very crucial for deciding if this eye wall is going to try to close off or not. There is points where it really tries to close off, uh, but it just ultimately can't do it because the southwestern side is too dry and it's not um, supportive of deep convection yet. Although the, some sh some of the shallower convection is trying to kind of wrap around and, and form a primitively closed eye wall, but you need deep convection on all sides to be uh, truly closed and not just some light scattered precip. It has to be a little bit more than that. So where is this thing going to go afterwards? Well, this is a little bit tricky and, you know, luckily we have an upper level reconnaissance aircraft right now that is heading out around the storm. You notice that this uh, left from Lakeland, Florida not too long ago. That's the Kissimmee Airport right there, Leesburg Airport, Sanford, Daytona Beach. Um, and this, you know, came north and is now turning on its path here around the storm. This is going to sample the ridge environment out ahead of uh, Isaias. And again, that's going to be very important to determining uh, where the storm goes. But uh, so far, the models have been very wish-washy and not really reliable, although we are starting to see some more consistency here. So first of all, what we're looking at here is the GFS 500 millibar geopotential height here, which is 18,400 feet in the atmosphere, taking a look at your ridge strength. Basically, these darker reds and lighter reds are your higher pressures with lower pressures in yellow and green up here. And again, this is only this is uh, valid as of about one o'clock or, or about one hour ago, rather, at two o'clock. This is now approaching three. And again, 
the GFS here has a pretty strong stout ridge out here. And that's really preventing the because there's not really this significant trough right now, like you see that's kind of coming back out here. There's not a lot to actually erode a lot of this ridge here. So what ends up happening is as you go forward the next 24, we'll go 18 hours by early Sunday, you notice what's starting to happen here is our ridge is actually a little bit stronger. Our trough is relatively in the same position, but if we go back to even a couple of runs ago, you notice how that ridge strength is a lot higher. And this is kind of taking a look at some of the trends uh, over the past couple of uh, runs here. And you notice how that ridge is slightly stronger, nosing its way in here towards Florida. And that's keeping the storm on a more western trajectory and not allowing it to affect far to the north. By hour 24, this ridge is still prominent and it's still building, basically. It's still building in. And again, the latest couple of runs have been really much the same with uh, having this in the same general position. Uh, but again, you move out 30 hours now, the ridge is still not as prevalent. And if we can kind of get the comparisons, there we go. But you can kind of see how that ridge is... You know, here at 30 hours, you know, a couple of uh, the initialization of this earlier was 0Z. This is the 0Z run. And you can see how that ridge is building in and that trough is a tad bit delayed and it's a tad bit weaker and a tad bit uh, further to the northwest. That allows this ridge to continue building in. And some of the recent guidances has getting us awfully close to Florida here. And as such now, within the next 42 hours, this is almost basically making landfall in Florida on the East Coast because you notice a couple of things here. First of all, this trough position is not digging in as much as it has been on other runs. And if we kind of scoot that out here for a couple of runs previous, and we kind of look at that comparison, you notice when it was way out there, it was a much stronger storm, but that ridge was allowing it to move north with capturing of this. Now you're seeing that ridge build in that uh, about 594 decameter height right there. It's kind of reinforcing this ridge uh, strength out here. So this is one of the more concerning trends. And to back that here, the European forecast here is much of the same way with much of the ridge axis now being interconnected and that trough being uh, lower. And as such, it's making landfall in Florida. And you notice the previous run at, at um, you know, yesterday, 12Z yesterday, had it uh, basically uh, off the coast with a ridge that was much like this with a trough like that. And that was allowing for it to get pulled up. But now you notice that today's 12Z run a little bit further east on the trough axis or a little bit further east on the ridge axis here. That's kind of blocking it from going further inland and eventually kind of pulls out into the Carolinas. But, you know, that's after, you know, you get this big dent in the, in the trough and everything else. So this is the, one of the things that we have to look for here over the next few days or so or over the next 24 hours. Now, thankfully, like I said, the aircraft reconnaissance for the upper level recon is going to give us a better uh, estimate of what's going on. That data is going to be assimilated into the model guidance partially for the 18Z model or for the... Um, for the 0Z model runs. The 0Z model runs are basically your 8 o'clock uh, p.m. Eastern Time model runs. And some of this data from the drop sounds uh, from the upper level recon uh, will be assimilated into the computer guidances tonight. So thankfully, we're going to have our answer sooner rather than later. But again, as, as it stands, as it stands, if you live in Florida, you need to be preparing right now for the possibility of hurricane conditions, especially uh, along the Florida East Coast. If you live along the West Coast, you're fine. Uh, but if this does come inland, uh, even a tad bit, it could bring some gustier winds and some squall, uh, some squally conditions to the West Coast of Florida um, over the next um, you know day or over the next 24 hours or so. No hurricane conditions along the, the West Coast. But there could be some gusty winds and some squally weather, squally conditions if this does move inland and shifts further off towards the west. Again, the main impacts though for Florida uh, remains hurricane force winds, uh, beach erosion, 
surf, maybe some storm surge. That's one thing that, that is going to be a problem. Obviously, for the Bahamas, storm surge, gusty winds, hurricane conditions, all in for it today. So for you folks in the Bahamas, that's you know going to be a rough situation. And the weather is going to continuously deteriorate uh, across the central and northern Bahamas uh, later today and tonight. And then through uh, Florida by tomorrow, tomorrow evening, and then through Sunday. For central Florida from Orlando east, that's probably where the best chance for gustier winds, squally conditions will be. The best chance for hurricane conditions immediately along the coast. But if you live in Osceola, Orange, Bavard, Seminole, Volusia, um, those counties that I'm calling out, you know, and many more counties than that. But if you live in those specific counties, be ready for some tropical storm force gusts, especially Bavard, Volusia County, uh, hurricane conditions possible. Um, and obviously even through Lake Okeechobee, tropical storm conditions are possible. So again, a lot to watch here over the next few days or so. And just as a quick reminder that it is hurricane season, there is two more systems out here. This little system right here, not really doing a whole lot. Again, that is not, I'm not sure why it's updating, but only 20% here over the next five days. And this little system in the southwestern Atlantic, a 30% chance over the next five days. None of these really poses a threat to land uh, directly at this moment. So our main focus is going to be on Isaias here over the next couple of days or so. Don't forget, I'm on Twitter at MicroMally1. Go follow me there. I'll be posting more consistent updates throughout the day today. Um, also, our camera system project, we are going to be deploying that uh, in front of Hurricane Isaias as it, as it could potentially make landfall here in Florida or just stay right off the coast. Again, a lot is going to pe depend and hinge on the track here over the next 12 to 24 hours. But if it does track close enough to bring some uh, good conditions, we are going to set it up here and at, at our home base. And we will be bringing that to you guys. All right. Hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and early evening. Since we have more direct threats to land now, I will be doing three video updates a day. So be on the lookout for another video update from me by later this afternoon and evening probably uh about seven or eight o'clock this evening probably by the eight o'clock intermittent advisory i'll be back with another uh, brief video update regarding hurricane isaias all right take care everyone of course be sure to prepare now it's never too late to prepare and or you know sometimes it is but never too early to prepare rather and of course, you know, heat advice from the weather service and your local, your local government officials and the hurricane center. All right. Take care, everyone. Have a great rest of your early afternoon and early evening. I'll see you guys back here around eight o'clock for the intermittent advisory. Take care.